Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to another Simple Life 2 stream. I'm Winry. We're here inside my beach house trying to get some stuff together. Uh, I have a few plans today. We are not going to do mine colonies again. Um, we are going to try to do some more Botania and hopefully work towards finally getting that set up. The loot farm. Um, we may need more than one. Hello, Yasmin. Nice to see you. First things first, I want to automate the thermal lily. Um, for the most part. I don't have another dimensional transceiver. I'm not going to make one right away because I don't have the mob parts to do so. Um, that's another, that's the reason we really need woot. But what I am going to do is just grab one of these capacitors um, and take it with me to the nether. So <laughs> that's pretty much what we're going to do with that for now. It, so it'll be semi-automated. It'll be automated until the power runs out. Okay, there we go. Um, in you go. And when we get done setting this up, I am not going to be updating to bread, no. If I play a season two of The Simple Life, I will update, but because of the massive changes to the mod pack as a whole, um, I'm going to just stick with the 136 update. Um, let us grab some things. So, you can put the pump directly next to lava. I think it has to be a source. So let's make sure this is a source. Yes, it is. Alright, put you here. Put the battery on top. Leave her next to it. Ooh, I might have needed... Um, that is my mining bag, not my tool bag. Where's my hammer? Ooh, I don't have my hammer. I might need my hammer for setting that to output. Wait, there it is. Okay. Out. There we go. And then we slap you on top, flip you over. And off it goes. Oh wait, maybe it goes the other way. It goes that way. Okay. So there we are, and you can see out there there's some cobblestone being generated. And that is what happens with this pump. It is very server friendly in that these the flowing stuff, um, you won't have that. It replaces the sources it picks up with cobblestone. So this is running. We do need to load the chunk. Hmm, doesn't work in the nether. We'll see. Come on. Come on! Chunk. Load. Ugh, goodness. Okay. Hello, cat. Nice to see you. Alright. So now that we're back, we can go to the Batania Forest, and I can show you what I've done. 
Uh, not a lot, in my opinion, but some people might see that I've done a lot. Um, so let's get this set up. And turn you over. And there we go. You are set to go. This just flipped over, so it's going to take a bit before it, uh dispenses lava, but this will be running until we run out of power in our capacitor. What I have done is I did some trading with the elf in the elven gateway and I got things to upgrade our mana spreaders and whatnot to the elven variety. And one of the other things that I did, I don't even think I have it on me, but let's look. Yep. Slime in a bottle! And I found a slime chunk in this area. I wanted it relatively close to the mana tree. And I actually found one right here where these blocks are. It goes in this direction. It's one chunk. And I dug it out. So we have a slime chunk dug out. A Narslimus is incoming! Yes. So we dug this out, and I set up the water streams. This is where the Narslimus is going to sit and kill all the slimes. And then this spot right here is where the mana pool is for the Thermal Lily. All the way up there. So I'm just going to send it up via um, Elven Spreaders up to that mana pool. So that I don't have to hook up another rail or anything. Um... I don't remember if it will drop slime balls when it gets killed by the Nars limits, but we can set that up too, just in case. And the thing I need to do to make this function is we need to get back into Astral Sorcery real quick and make the, the um, thing that lights up caves, because I haven't done any of that. And if we want to optimize um, the, the slimes here, we need to get the caves lit up. So <clears throat> we'll be doing that. Yep, the cave illuminator. I've never used it, so heard good things. <laughs> Alright, so this is automated, so this will be making us some mana. The Gormorillus is automated fully. The end of flame flames are partially automated. I need to set it up so that it gets coal continuously or whatever fuel source I'm going to be using. Probably just about out of, yeah, it's out of what I brought. Um, so there's three. We have three flowers working on the fourth one. So let's see what we need to do to make the Narslimus. Because I don't believe I have all the runes. Narslimus! Summer and water. I'm pretty certain I don't have summer. I have water. Alright, so let's see. Summer is the one that needs melon, I think. Yeah, melon slime. Earth, air. Earth air, melon, sand, I probably need to grab slime. Yeah, it looks like I do. So let's do that real quick. Oh, and I just teleported to the, where we are. <laughs> Alright. Actually, we have green right there. There we go. Is that it for summer? Yes. Okay, so let's head back over there and grab us some living rock and get that crafting. Alright, 
my runic altar is still currently living up here. We're so ghetto right now with this stuff. But I do hope to change that in the future. There it goes. I think I knew it would take it. Need to update that mana spreader, but again, this is temporary until I find a permanent place for this. Alright, so we have summer, water, we just need to grab- ooh, and I must have- yay! Summer was the last one we needed. I need the petals. Um... I need inventory space, so let's put those in there and see what I know I'm sure I need green petals. Two lime, two green, one black. Do I have any of those already in petal form? No. Two lime, two green, one black. And water and seed. Do these work? Let's find out. They do in other packs. Two lime, one black, two green, water, summer. That does not work. It needs the vanilla seed. Can you tell I've been out here breaking grass looking for seeds? Not a lot of grass out here anymore. Slimus. Yay! Now, do I have enough stuff to make an elven spreader? I already have an elven spreader, so I just need the mana pool. Do the second. We'll grab the second one so we can start sending it up the chain. Mm, I probably need you. And a chest. Do I have a chest made? No. Let us make a chest. Absolutely no inventory space anymore. <laughs> That's the life of a modded. <gasps> Excuse me, sorry about that. Alright, down we go. I have seen a couple of slimes spawn here, so I know that slimes will spawn here. Just also know... <laughs> I also know that it's just not possible when... Um, there, mobs are spawning everywhere else as well. Upper hawk. Chest. We're gonna put some light back in here. Mana pool and let's see. Put you there. You should reach just fine, and then we'll just pair you up. You don't need to be paired. There we go. Pick up any items. Um, yeah, so.
One, two, three, four. Oh, well, hey, we're holding this. We don't have to count. We need to send it to here. All right. And then we're just going to dig our way back down. will work there. We are all set. This is all we need. We need to, you know, do more up that direction. But for now, this is this is all set to go. This covers every all of the area that we need here. This will kill all the slimes that come into the death zone. It's lit up, which means no other mobs will spawn in there. And so now we just need to make the oh, cave illuminator from Astral Sorcery. And put it probably directly over the um, middle of the chunk, the slime chunk, to help take care of um, badness in the area. Let's go back, clear our inventory. and then see what we need for the recipe. I haven't looked it up yet. Um, all right, that's good for now. I think the journal happens to be at the Sky Palace. Which, if I remember correctly, I don't think I have this chunk loaded, which means the aquamarine generator isn't running. Torches don't take up the spawning spaces, cat. They are entities, not blocks, so that doesn't matter. I have four aquamarine shale. Um, this looks a little on the broken side. Sand should not be floating. There it goes. Now it's working. All right, so while we're here, Um, is the journal in my inventory? It is. <laughs> um, I think it's in exploration. I guess not. Cave illuminator, there we go. All right, so, oh, that's no problem at all. The two rock crystals, illumination powder we may need to make. Nope, we don't. Make sure these are not the fancy ones. All right, let's see if I can remember what this is without looking it up. That looks correct, so we just need to wait till we have the star power. And the resonating one's in my toolbox, I think. Yes. There's that. <clears throat> we could watch this. Look at it go! Oh, we have six shale now. Yay, we've gained two just being here. Love it. I do wish the aquamarine had a, a block form.
And star metal. I wish star metal came in a block form too. For building purposes. You can see I have not done any more building here. Um, this is the next building I plan on developing. And then there'll be another bridge from here. This might be a tower. I don't know. From this point to that point will be another bridge. Another sky bridge. Um, this won't actually be a building. Um, it's going to have more ornate columns on the edges. And then I'm going to expand this a little bit further so that there's a walking path on the outside. This block here is where the other sky bridge is going to go to connect to that one. It looks like I'm going to have to make this one a tower to make it a decent sky bridge. And then we'll get up here, and I don't know what this one's going to be yet. Um, if anything, you know, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, and then I have a bunch of mana glass to make for the tops of these. There is, there is, I've not built it. Um, I've not worked on Astral Sorcery for a bit. There's not a whole lot of documentation as far as some of the things that I want to do. So it just requires me puttering around in creative mode. I haven't done that yet. But I haven't made any, I haven't made the collector crystals, I haven't done any of that. So that's just kind of, oh, we're not even at noon. Well, <laughs> so maybe we'll go off and do something else for now. Maybe. Yeah, not waiting here. Let's show you the other things I've been working on between streams. This building now has a roof. And I've been filling in the walls with the capacitor banks. We've got to here. Anywhere that there's cables, there will be facades that look like capacitor banks. But um, yeah, we're filling in the walls. Up here is where I hope to fit woot farms for at least one woot farm, but the things I will need to upgrade my Andrio power. A reverse bed, you mean like blood magic has with that um, ritual? So yeah, we've got Hooch running. I will have to break this fluid tank. Sigh, sigh. I, I'm gonna have to move it. And... I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> but I would like to upgrade to the next um, fuel, which is fire water. And fire requires the Hooch plus blaze powder and redstone. Now redstone I can duplicate using Batania, and I probably will, but blaze powder, I have two options. I can make a, I think passive dropping has turned off in 110. No longer a thing, I don't know. I need to make a woot farm for blazes and stick them up here, pretty much. So in here would be a blaze woot farm and don't know about the redstone portion of it. I mean, I could do essence. I kind of don't want to do essence for things that you can find underground. That's just kind of my little personal rule for this playthrough. So... Um... Might be the mana. Where is the? You can't dupe it. Oh, it's probably this. There we go. <clears throat> so it's not bad. It is a decent amount. But why are you up there? Oh, I have those stupid bubbles from waypoint teleporting. Um. 
I've done anything else in here. I don't think I've done anything else in the steampunk cliffs yet. I have a lot of building planned. You know, a witch farm might be a good plan because then I could get the glowstone and the gunpowder and I really don't need glass bottles and sticks, which we could use the sticks to fuel our endo flames. Um, so yeah, maybe a Woot Witch Farm would be a good idea. Oh, guys, I did this. Um, on my, I wanted a little bit of an overhang here, so I did the one where you've got the planks that just create a little bit of shade. I'm not sure if the planks are too thick, but I doubt I'm going to alter it too, you know. I could cut them a little bit thinner but I haven't yet, so I'm still deciding on that. But then it's connected here for support. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, I don't think I did anything else here. I'm gonna have to relog to get those bubbles to go away for the... I lined the window here. There's no glass in it yet, and I made the little sill above the doors. Um, I did some mine colony stuff. <laughs> well, let's see. We're not going to do any mine colony stuff. I just want to show you. I upgraded this other house, so they're all tier 2 housing. I do have one unemployed currently. Um, the farm back here is running. I have a chunk loader back here. So, the farmer is going. That's just a tier 1 farm. Um, I Builder's just standing there because this is all done. He has got no other jobs currently. Um, I think this is be the next thing I do. Um, I'll either upgrade this to tier 2 or do tier 3 with the mine because the mine is the purpose of this whole colony. It's mine. I don't know if you can hire other workers, further workers when you upgrade it higher. Yeah, it's only two. I can upgrade it once more. But um, he's currently branch mining at level 30, which is okay. Um, you can get, for level 30, you can get like copper and tin and whatnot. So that's where he has started his branch mining. And uh, he could, he'll go further to make a further shaft closer to bedrock when I upgrade this again. And Kat says you only, I need to build a second mine in order to get more miners, which makes sense. So that was kind of the purpose. I was going to put mines like all along this cliff face here. And I know they'll probably intersect each other at some point with the um, branches. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about that. So this is going to be the whole, and the problems that I'm having right now is that I didn't want the housing to be near the, the jobs. Is why I put the housing over there, but at night time, like around now, they take a, especially the miner, a long time to get home. And the only time they eat is when they go home, unless they're a guard. So that is, um, that is where I'm at with the, the mine colonies. Again, the whole purpose of this mine colony isn't for anything but mining. This is my quarry pretty much since there are no other quarry options this is my quarry so i'm what <laughs> hundred hours into the game now and i'm just now making a quarry <laughs> so yeah all right so let's go back to the sky palace since it's getting dark I will relog after we craft this um, cave illuminator to get rid of these bubbles. These bubbles come from the waystones. So, 
It is ready to go. Yes, they are. Okay, so we have the cave illuminator. Let's relog. Azur says in the very far future there's the void ore miner. I'm not I'm not using environmental tech in this playthrough. So I realized that I could use the void ore miner. You can get everything from the void ore miner. You can get everything that you can mine. But I'm not using it. Uh oh. There it goes. All right, let's. We've completed a couple quests, so let's take care of those because I like rewards. All right, we did that one, and I think one in Batania. Yep. So we get a rare and an epic loot bag. Eh. It's, it's okay. It's okay. The epic bacon's kind of nice. That's blah. So we'll leave those alone. Now, I think you just place this down. Where's... I hope these fart bubbles go away. Okay. Let us read. Calling the illuminating properties of the power made from glowstone and aquamarine. It was only a matter of time until a device that takes advantage of these properties on a massive scale could be created. Um, it focuses the sparks emitted by the glowstone and aquamarine using rock crystals, shaping them into small blue colored flares that can remain lit indefinitely. These flares can pass through solid objects and repel each other, allowing them to automatically space themselves evenly as they form. Any lightless open space located beneath the device itself... It just says impressive distance. I'm hoping it goes a really good distance away or we're going to have to have more than one of these. It adapts to newly formed spaces if we dig holes. Requires a visible night sky. Okay. So we are going to have to dig out one of these trees, probably. Alright, so F3 and G puts up the grid. This is the chunk, so as you can see, I'm going to get rid of this tree, unless I place it on top of the tree. Don't really, really okay here's the problem cat with putting it on top of the tree won't it light up the places underneath the tree here won't it put light sources down here then I want magical light sources of a different type <laughs> in my forest area so the problem I'm seeing here doing that would be that it could put light sources up here and I don't want that so I would probably want to put it down on the ground level for that so yeah so the tree will have to go um one two three four five six seven right around here yeah right where the tree is at okay bye tree give me space yes thank you all right so I can remove them, but will they just respawn? There we go. We put it here. And we'll see how it goes. So the thing is, is that now with this here, I could actually remove the torches in the slime chunk pretty quick, pretty soon. And, um...
Oh, okay. So if the illuminator stays there and I break a light that it creates, it won't recreate the light unless I move this. This has sky access? It does. So we're fine there. Oh, once they're in place, you don't need to leave it there? Oh. Oh, here's one. Here's one. See, what I'm wondering is if they, if I remove these. If it'll put yellow lights here. We're gonna, it's doing slow air, it's not a fast process, I'm sure. <clears throat> it's gotta send them all out. But look at that! Okay, so yep. So I do not have to have torches on these. Um, at all. It's placing tor lights for me. So we'll take, let it do its thing. <clears throat> On the platforms. Yeah, it, I figured it would take a while. Okay. And like other light sources, I'm sure they won't get in the way of mobs. Once we get a decent distance away, like if we were to camp out by the Narslimus, we should start seeing slime spawn here. Don't, we're not going to camp down here. I do see there's a skeleton on the spawning pad, so that tells... Oh, there's a slime already. You can see him on the mini-map. Our first customer. Right there. Oh, there he just got eaten, and now we have mana. Yay! <laughs> so now we just need to make several more spreaders and mana pools and send, get up to the level up there for the other mana spreader or the mana pool that I have up there. So yeah, we had our first slime. And this yeah, this will slowly light up I as as it works. It's magic. And I won't have to worry about other things spawning in here. As that happens. So let's head up. Whoop. 
Eventually I won't need to come down here at all, which is why I didn't make a ladder or anything. I'm just going to block this hole when I don't have to come down there anymore. Um, because I'll put an ender chest for the slimes. So there we go. F3G turns off borders. That is a vanilla thing, in case you didn't know. Vanilla added it in, I want to say, 1-9. Okay. Narslimus, check that off my list. Lava, check that off my list. <clears throat> Ah, uh, petal farm. I'd like to get this tree made. This really cool tree, and I need thousands of petals. So we need to make a jaded amaranthus and get a petal farm going. Um, so we have that. That's something we need to do. Do I have all of the dream wood? I don't think I have all the elementium. I only have one. Yeah, we're gonna need to do some trading with the elven portal for wood. Elementium is two mana per elementium. Yeah. So let's just chuck all of that in there. Grab whatever petals I have. All right. go. So let's get this set up. Let's get our wand out though, so that we can know where to place them. Alright. And... What is where I'm digging? What is right next to it? Okay, so we'll encounter the pump as we dig up. Alright. More slimes! Where is he? There he is. We got a big one coming. He will produce a lot of mana. Um, I don't think they split, do they? No, he just gets consumed. And I, like I said, I don't think it drops any slime. I wasn't sure. Doesn't look like it. Oh, here comes another one. Yay! Alright. So let's head up here. Not me. Can I hear him? Do 
even have a way to go. That might be about it. We may have a problem if these flares get in the way of um, mana bursts. to be plenty high enough. So, this needs to go. There. Just keep plugging away at it. One, I bet. Yep, there it goes. And it looks like it doesn't interfere, so that's good news. It is sending it up. All right. So we should probably take this down since we won't need it. Um, and since that's the case, we will never have to come down here again. It will just automatically run whenever we're in the area, of course. Um, let's do a bit of cleanup with valuable things in there. Looking good. So let's just close you off so I don't fall down there. And that is all set. It is flowing up to here to this mana pool. And this mana pool is all set up to go to the mana tree when this is full. All right. Drop off some stuff if we can keep adding chests I think that's good all right pedal farm is our next plan so I need to figure out where I want to put it and go from there so let's see And the Elven Gateway there. I think I might like to put it somewhere around here. Let's see about terrain in this area. Right here would be a nice spot in this flat area. We can trim this back a bit. So the plan is we need to get a mana pool here, we need to hook it up to the mana tree, and then we also need to make the jaded amaranthus a way to harvest the flowers, and then storage. That tree we need to tweak. 
if we keep it. There we go. Much better. Alright, let's light up the area that we're going to be in. That should work. So let's make this flower. Probably going to need to get some bone meal because I'm pretty certain it needs a lot of different petals. Did I put the petal pouch in here or something? I did. Alright, jaded amaranthus, folks. Jaded. Oh, purple, lime, and green. Spring. I have spring. Okay, good. We can use that up. Green. Purple. Lime. Redstone root. Grass. Don't have any redstone on me. I bet I do. There we are. Redstone root. Water. Okay. One, 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 one. Yep, so I just need to get a wheat seed. There we go. There's the Jaded Amaranthus. Let's grab one of these mana pools. A spark. A spreader from the tree. I have the recessive. I don't want to use the recessive. I have to think about that. What I'm going to do as far as getting the mana here. I need to make a few more branches. I've only got the four. So that might actually decide it as well. So. Let's put it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, here. Yep, that does cover practically everywhere. That is good. And I very may put the storage stuff like up here. I have that hopper hawk that I'll be able to use. Um, mana. Can I put you the mana pool just outside the area and have it reach? Yes, okay. So we need to get the tree to send mana here. And I think it is more than 12, so a spark won't be a good idea unless we can figure out a branch to get a little closer. Have um, mana go from here over there. Um, do I have? I don't. We should do is get some more living wood being made. We can use up what we chopped down there. So we got living wood being created. Grab that. I don't need two stacks. And I'll say the pool's right about here. 
to be tr fair, this branch right here is the one that would be the easiest to get there. We could just um, have it go up and then back down again. Trying to think about how the leaves will end up on it as well. That shouldn't be too bad. Um, it's off by one. It needs to be over one. If I put... Yeah, if we can send the mana to here. Did I only grab mana pools? This is within the 12 oh, blocks that a spark would be needed. But see, so this one is dominant. I don't think having another dominant spark out here will be very helpful. I have to really figure out how to do this. There has to be a way. Otherwise, why would you want to just have a flat plane full of mana? I want something creative. And then what we're going to do here is have the receiving pool here with a mana spreader under it going down to that pool. So the treaks can stay mana spreader. Guys, again, shall we? Okay. So that started, and then I wonder. Hi, Genji Main. It's a party of mobs. They love me. Whoa. All right, so we have that set up. The which one? This one over here? Yes. The Gormorillus one I did from Riskable Builds. Um, I think this is Riskable Builds too, but it's really not that. Um, I at la, la, la. I edited it and changed it so it would do living wood as well. Oh, so there's that. Um, 